actually as close to as ready as we can go. We're missing a hub because there was the wrong bearing in there. That one was correct. This one had the wrong ID. We couldn't get it on. But guess what? A lot of cutting has begun. So, entire shock tower. Shock tower is gone. The under bracing, I guess it would be the traction rod to the rear axle cut off. We're still cutting off things as we go, but it's like we're simplifying the underside of it. We've also removed the gas tank, all the plumbing for the brake lines, all the plumbing for the fuel tank, steering columns out, steering boxes out. It's just now like a shell basically. And Mark has removed all this crap and drilled spot welds. Look at, it's all beautiful, but so much extra time is going into this for that because part of the requirements to set this up. What happens is this is unbolted and it kind of, you guys will see. So you unbolt that, you put it in, then you re-bolt that back in after it's in place. I don't know if this makes sense, but it like sandwiches the chassis in there basically and you through bolt punch a hole through it or there might be a hole. I think you gotta drill a hole. Let's look, yeah. You're drilling a hole, but that's what like will keep it centered on the chassis, basically, the rail. It's not a rail, but the unibody that is left that we have not now cut up. So you can see a bunch was cut out, runs through here. Then there's like these side plates that they sell that cover that gaping hole that you saw where the strut tower used to be, because this is now basically the top of the strut tower right here brings it down much lower. So then there's like this plate that you can buy that's gonna go, well, this company that builds it makes it. So we're gonna put that in. Meanwhile, the motor, the RB26 is being taken down. Has a lot of OEM crap on there. We don't need all that because it's a race car that we're building. We are stripping as much of that down as possible, swapping over the oil pan and whatnot, and then making our big list of parts that we need to order to refresh that motor and get it as healthy as we can. If we're lucky, maybe that chassis will be bolted into that car by end of today. I don't know, there's a lot of cutting and finessing of metal and like Mark keeps stopping what he's doing and sweeping up piles of metal and then rework. I don't know, crazy amount of cutting happens because you're basically making an old car into a modern car. Let's keep moving on it. We'll give you guys an update when there's more to show you. Okay guys, we're working on RVs in here. We don't actually hate RVs as much as we're leading on to, or do we? Anyway, so this is the RB26. We have to make this RB25 oil pan work on it, so that means modifying pickup tube. And we have stripped everything off the block, painted it so it looks clean, put this really nice Tomei oil pump on there, fresh water pump on there cleaned up the deck surface. The head is at the machine shop so that it can get a fresh deck on it. Then we have a new Tomei head gasket. We have a restrictor. As you guys know, these have a bunch of reliability issues. If you want to say they don't, you're crazy because they have a lot of little things you got to do to make it more reliable when you up the horsepower. So now Mark is working on this pickup tube and what he's going to do is cut it and extend no. it maybe. What do you have to do? Don't do anything. Oh, you don't have to do anything. You cut the baffles. Is that it? That's not so bad. And what about these, like the girdle baffles? Can't yeah, use them? They can't go? No. These have to come out. They're out. Head's no. gone. The girdle just stays as is, I guess, with no hardware and stuff in it, just like that? Yep. Yep. And then you're going to cut how big of a spot out on here. That's crazy. This is the RB life, whereas a 1J or a 2J, just interchangeable. But the cool thing about an RB, there is one cool thing, it's Renee's initials, Renee Burkett. <laughs> <laughs> the other cool thing is, nothing. I guess you could say nothing, or that you could tighten down the head while the cams are in, because that's kind of cool. You can't do that on a 2J. You still can't get all the bolts up. Oh. <laughs> Well, anyways, that's our update on TJ's motor right now. We got a lot of stuff to put back in, but we're doing it step by step. A little slower than normal because we want to make sure this works properly and everything's right. And then we're replacing anything that would need replacing like seals and gaskets. We're going to add some ARP head studs as well. So we have all the right parts. Tomei head gasket is here. We'll be putting that on when we get the, I guess we need to get the head back from Mason first to engine supply timing belt. Does this come with a timing belt? 
No, maybe we need a new Tomei timing belt too. All right, more to come guys. We'll update you as it goes back together. Okay, let's take a look at this Mustang. We have everything pulled out. There was no brake booster, but all the brake master cylinder and all that stuff. We are going to pull the gas pedal out because check this out. That's the gas pedal. Not gonna be able to use that very efficiently with anything modern. The RB26 that's going in here is going to need just normal cable pull type throttle. We're hopefully gonna either put a Gretti or a Hypertune intake manifold on it. We're still seeing which one of those we go with, but that's just gonna need a normal cable, so we'll probably end up drilling some holes, mounting, well, no, it'll be on this side. Well, it could be on that side, but it's gotta go to this side for the intake. So this, literally moves the wrong way. We're not gonna try and reinvent that. We're just gonna throw a different gas pedal from a different vehicle in there. Parts have been coming in for this build. We've also been waiting on the motor we're refreshing, so we're waiting on that stuff, waiting on all these parts. Now that the motor is almost refreshed and we did receive this transmission, that's a five speed for RB25. Neo is probably out of like a R32. I don't know, GT, GS. You guys tell me, I don't really know much about the Skyline, so it's not a, not a GTR, it's just probably like GST or whatever it'd be. Here's TJ's motor, oil pen's not on yet, head is on, but we don't have the covers completed, we need to get those done for him, changing the color up a little bit. Let's look in here. So, steering column is out, pedals are out, there's a bunch of crap that was in the way of where we're going to mount some pedals. We're gonna mount Willwood pedals in here because the way this stuff was set up before, it was gonna be really hard to make it work efficiently with what we're gonna like to modernize this car. So let's take a look over here real quick. Andrew's been working on this for a little bit yesterday and some of today. This is where the stock brake and clutch hung from, or is it just the stock brake? Oh, it's both, yeah. Yeah, it's so like a whole pedal he, assembly. he cut everything apart from it, and this is all that's left, but this can bolt into a position like under the dash on the stock dash beam or bar or whatever it would be. Barely has room for these master cylinders, but then he made this little cage, and then this plate, we make those, so it's like easy for a Willwood setup, so you can just bolt it in. And this is what he's gonna do. So firewall back here, that'll get welded into the Mustang. Instead of welding into a structure that we don't really have underneath the, basically where the speedometer would be right here and the cluster, there's like a stock bar that runs across basically, or like- Part of the dash support. Part of the dash support. And we thought this would be our easiest way without, still not easy what we're doing. And he keeps, see how there's like cut and grind marks. He keeps like adjusting and changing. Cause it's like trying to make it fit in a stock car without a roll cage. Typically when we put these in, you'd have a roll cage to like, you could just kind of weld wherever in this car, you can't weld wherever. And so another thing, yeah, we have to have a steering column punch through between these and there isn't so much room. So he's been fighting with it yesterday a little bit. And now today, so that's where we're at though. He also has another story to tell us. Zero no, in the morning. <laughs> just using this to bolt to the stock dash like location where the pedal assembly was so it's easier and you know it's uh, the old pedals are there and we were thinking if we use a super pedal powering a mustang with an rb that could make that is every time the rb gets gas it's from a super pedal don't you think that'll piss off that rb <laughs> should we do that make it more angry so it'll <laughs> yeah it'll make it run better <laughs> fine i'm gonna run <laughs> All right, so that's the update on that and kind of where the motor's at. We got to mate the motor to that transmission I showed you guys. And then he's got an ACT clutch that showed up a couple days ago. Got to get that on there and then we can build some motor mounts and some trans mounts. But one other thing, we've removed the gas tank. See this big hole now? We got a radium fuel cell and FCST fuel cell surge tank combo coming here. We're gonna install that in there and then do some really nice fuel lines and do the rest of the plumbing. We're gonna also mount a Tilton reservoir in here. You saw that we had Willwood pedals and then we have some Tilton parts. We're not like biased to any of these parts. It's just certain ones that are like easier to work with that we've seen over the years. Mix and match things and get them to work together. Let me show you this. 
check this out. These are really convenient and they're not so hard to mount. It just has two through bolts. I think it's a 5 16 bolt goes through there. Usually what we were able to do is just get the, a long 5 16 Allen that goes through there and then behind on this side, which would hopefully be like, let's say over there. We gotta find a place that's high enough up, the right general area to run the dash four lines over to those master cylinders that are on the brake and clutch setup. He's working on the pedal assembly. Then we can run them over and it's, let's say we mounted it like, it's not gonna be mounted here, but like it's just mounted and then the hoses go over. So the turbo will be on that side. There'll be some heat over there, but we might be able to mount it right in that corner or possibly right there, like above where the downpipe would be. We don't know yet, because we probably have to build a shield, but this is a really cool race car part, and we figured, why not, for TJ's car. And we've had really good luck with that in the past. That's why we're mixing and matching Tilton, Willwood, whatever. There's his clutch. Not done yet by any means. We got a lot to go, but that's the update, and we'll show you as we get more stuff in there and more progress. Pulled the cover off of this. He's been over here, he's gotta blow this out, but he's been working on trimming that out because RB25 to 26, you can't just swap pans. And so then the other thing is he's gonna modify the pickup a little bit because it was sticks down a little too deep. So he cut, there's like a rounded kind of like cover on the bottom, he cut it off so just the screen mesh would be the bottom. And then it should clear, we hope. We're gonna test run it real quick. How much did it stick down? Bottom of that. Like an inch? So he took about an inch off. Whoa, you gotta clean that up again. I'm testing it. <laughs> He's testing it, but so he removed an inch and then we'll test run it. Still didn't receive our gauge racing timing belt yet. We're gonna get that maybe next week and a couple other parts and then we can put it all back together. And we're getting some stuff painted. Gotta make this look perfect, you know? on the inside of the car. Remember I was talking about a super gas pedal? Boom, right there. So we still gotta drill a hole through the firewall for that, but here's the pedal set, Willwood set in the car, and we've plumbed to the reservoir that's in the engine bay, and then we've also mounted this Woodward column here. TJ had an AEM CD7 sent here, and then we made a bracket to mount to the Woodward column. It's got a Sparco quick release set up on here. Progress has been made. I'll show you the back of the car, the trunk, in a second here. And then there is stuff happening to the front, but we've gone a little too far past what TJ's put on his video, so I can't show you the front of the car right now. But the hood is back on. You don't get to know what we actually did, but I can't show you what's happening. Ah, don't show him that. Okay, you guys are gonna have to wait till TJ releases that to you. But we did a lot of stuff on the inside as you saw, and then the motor's in there together with some really nice covers. I'll show you guys in the next video, but if you jump over to TJ's video, or if you already have, then you know what the motor looks like. And then we had a box in the trunk here, but let me get it out, and I'll show you what we got going in the back. Fuel cells mounted back here. This is a 14 gallon radium cell with the FCST. He's got dual pumps in there and a lift pump so he can go to way more horsepower than he's gonna ask the RB. You could probably go to like 900 horsepower with that many pumps. But we mounted it kind of where the OEM cell was. We had to build a structure to do that and then made those sheet metal panels. We'll probably get those satin black powder coated so that it kind of blends in. That's where we're at. I hope you guys like what we're doing to the Mustang. We got a lot of 
cool stuff we're gonna keep doing on it. This build is going to be over the top and I think it's gonna go to SEMA. We'll see what happens. We'll keep going on it. We'll update you guys soon.